here's the completed mini album slash folio um, of the man card mini album. I don't know if it's a mini album or a folio to be real honest. Um, anyway, it's by Photoplay and I'm just going to do a quick walkthrough. Um, I did not, I, on my tutorials, I show you how to make the pages, but I don't really go through the decorating, but I will show you, I mean, it's so easy, but I'll show you how I did this right hand side to make it look like a suit coat. Totally easy. Um, but let me do the walkthrough first. Um, so this is just some paper that I folded from the paper collection. This is a piece of paper. You could use cloth, however. Um, this came from a um, sale at Hobby Lobby. It was a Tim Holtz uh, pocket watch. And so you just open it up and you can put things in there. And so I just have um, some different doodads in there. And then I just found two buttons and glued those on. So it's really easy. So um, on the front cover, these tie and they open up. Um, this opens and there are cards in each one of these. Okay. And then to close it, you just tuck it underneath that paper. This just tucks in behind there and then it opens and then there are two more pockets that I put the calling cards in. So then that just folds up real easily. And I'm going to go ahead and tie it so that when I open the book it doesn't flap open. Okay, the bottom is the same thing. It is opens on both sides. This left I left open on the top for a picture. And then all three of these open uh, with the flap tucking under a piece of paper. Oops. Oopsie. Um, I must have glued that in the wrong spot. <laughs> um, anyway, and then there's a calling card or a cut apart inside. Okay, so that's that. And now let's get to the inside now that everything's put together. <clears throat> The book measures eight and a half by ten and a half and the spines are one and a half inches. It is a magnetic closure. And so let's start on the left hand side. Um, I have two pockets here that are magnetic and instead of uh, gluing these closed I left them open and you can put pictures and journal in there if you like. Um, I only glued it on the three sides so that I could put some cut aparts or pictures uh, on, the, on there. In the center, um, I have a, a hinge on each side. And so this one um, has an L pocket. There's a pocket down here with some cut aparts in it. Um, I just took some uh, of the cardstock that I get from Country Craft Creations, the linen cardstock. This one's actually blue a lot. I use some blue, most of it's black, but um, I incorporated some of the blue because there's some in the paper. Uh, and then I just stuck this up on three dimensional uh, foam squares. On the other side, so see it's, I'm going to have to move it to get it all in camera. On the other side, there's this is a pocket and I just made a tag and put in a cut apart. This is an opening here and I just left this blank for pictures. It opens. I am running out of room. Um, and I did place paper um, just as so you could get the feel of what it would look like once pictures are inside. So uh, whoever gets this, they don't have to mount it on, mat it on paper. It's already there. Um, and I left it open so they can tuck the picture behind. Um, these two flaps, uh, one goes up and one goes down. I am having a hard time getting this to fit in. Let me zoom out and see if that helps. A little bit. Um, so. The flap on top, I just glued a cut apart and stuck a little tag in there. I didn't glue it on the side. This is a pocket in the middle. And it's actually a double pocket. So then this one goes all the way down. And so you can put a lot on that. Uh, and then down at the bottom, the one that flapped down, also I put a cut apart, left it open on the side and just put in a piece of the black cardstock. Okay. So then the center is the same, uh, just reversed. Um, pocket, tag, and cut apart. This is my favorite. Look how cute that is. I think it's adorable. Uh, this also has a pocket. 
when you open it, the, a place for a picture here. These are flaps, so it goes up and down. This is a double pocket, so you have the long tag here and the shorter um, pocket here for smaller pieces. Down at the bottom and the top, I just placed black paper on the decorative paper for photos. Okay, and now you can, uh, there is an opening on the side um, for a large mat, but I have not put that in yet. Just, just so you know, you can get another eight by 10 piece of paper in the side. So then here's my L pocket cut apart. So I puffed up the little pig on three dimensionals, put in, um, this one's gray for pictures. Okay. And then I have a waterfall and I just use the um, seam binding closure and I put paper, decorative paper on the front, but I leave the back uh, plain and I do put um, paper in on the seam or on the um, one and a half inch connecting piece. So it will hold quite a few pictures. So that is my man card. Uh, comment below. Is this a mini album or is this a folio? Um, it's a chipboard cover. I don't know if that makes a difference, but I don't, I, I don't know the definition to differentiate between the two. Uh, so this folds in first, then this one, and then it closes up. Magnetic closure. So because I didn't show on the tutorial, let me just show you on this side right here, I had placed this paper and I didn't know how to decorate it. And so what I ended up doing, so I'll just use this white paper as an example. This was glued down. I cut another piece, uh, the color of the suit coat that I wanted. And all I did was um, put a little tick mark where I wanted to fold it and then I bend it over and I creased it, okay? And then I took a little notch, a triangular notch out to make it look like a lapel. And then I glued a button here so it looks like so. Um, so yeah, button, and then I put a rectangle piece of paper with the triangular white uh, cardstock for the little hanky, and then I just glued the back of the pocket watch down. So I mean, it's super super easy, but the end of effect I think is awesome. So um, I hope this tutorial wasn't too awfully long. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you saw the paper collection and that you saw the process on how to make the uh, base pages. If you have any questions, let me know. Like I said, go ahead and comment in the um, below and let me know if you would consider this a folio or a mini album. Um, I appreciate you watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't and visit countrycraftcreations.com for any of this paper or any of the materials that I've used. Thank you so much and I will have another tutorial soon. Hello everybody. I'm going to be working on a um, album slash folio uh, today. And I thought I would show you the materials that I'm going to use that I received from Country Craft Creations. This is my design team project. Um, I'm going to show you real quick the seam binding, just so you know that there are many different colors that you can choose from at the store. She ha If you need a color, the color she has. I'm pro I promise you that. So I am using the colors that will match the paper line that I'm going to be showing you. The paper line is called Man Card, and along with the paper, there are some cardstock die cuts, and there's 30 pieces in here, and they are very manly. So this will be kind of a different task for me, uh, maybe a little bit of a challenge, just because I'm kind of a girly, frilly, shabby type girl. So this will be good for me. This will be good for pictures of dads and fathers, and uh, Father's Day, birthdays, could even be... Um, some sort of graduation or something for a boy. So let's go through the papers real quick before I actually start um, giving you the um, tutorial for the uh, album. Um, like I said, it's called uh, Man Card and it is by Photoplay. Um, I'm going to start with the sticker sheet then just to kind of give you an overall idea of the different patterns you're going to see inside. Um, the, there's different themes, like there's a hunting theme and there's a barbecue and I saw a haircut and so it's just kind of a combination of things that we associate with men, I guess. Um, there's some like tickets up here across the top. We have a banner. There's some cute old shoes. 
Um, there's a couple sayings on here, handsome gentleman club, going out with the boys, the world is full of guys, be a man, brain and brawn. So that's the sticker sheet that I'll be using and the colors are more of a, a gold, um, a burg nah, burgundy slash rust, I guess. Um, more of a sage green, a navy, real masculine colors. This one is called Suave the Stag, and it is basically one of those busts that you put on the wall. That's what it looks like. It's got the background, like that would be wood, and then the deer, but he's got his suit on. That's cute. And then the back is a plaid. Um, this one is the one that's more of a, uh, it's, uh, called Barber, and you see the barber pole and some scissors. Um, it says stash on there, so an open sign. This is a um, royal blue. Is that right? Royal? Yeah. And then the back is, um, looks like a suit kind of to me, like a fabric with a pinstripe. And it's more of a brown. This is the barbecue paper. That's really cute. Um, the apron and pig and the utensils, the grill. That's adorable. And on the back we have another plaid. So you're going to see quite a few plaids. This is called Stripe, but this is not the side that has the stripe, obviously. Again, this is a burgundy color with the polka dot. And here's the stripe. And again, it's got the blue, yellow, some brown in there, the burgundy. Here is the sheet of cut aparts um, that are different sizes. We have Suns Out, Guns Out in the upper left hand corner. Uh, honor the originals. Honor Valor, excuse me. Uh, here's the beef, the legend. It's your birthday, big guy. Eat my dust. So different cards here that are good for journaling or putting pictures on the back. And then here is an actual man card, like tick. Not uh, it's not ticket. It doesn't have the stub corners. Just rectangular. Um, it's black background. And here is another sheet of cut apart. This one's called Handsome. Uh, that, that's the name stud here in the corner. Uh, I'm a man. I know stuff and do things. Being a gentleman never gets old. Stay humble, hustle hard, stay wild, handsome. And then there's that cute little deer in the corner with the suit on. And on the back you have some words such as suave, handsome, gentleman, dapper, sharp, stud. So those are the six different papers, but you have the 12 styles um, to make today's album. Um, I'm going to go ahead, and I guess it would be more of a folio, to be real honest, um, just because it's not going to have as many pages. Um, I, I'm going to try something different. So I haven't made it yet, um, so I'll be giving you the tutorial as I go through this. So to start off with, let's start with the chipboard. You are going to need, um, for the cover, two that measure eight and a half by ten and a half two that measure one and a half by ten and a half and one that measures three and a half by ten and a half and this chipboard is from country craft creations it's a good thickness and um, the way the book will be laid out you've probably seen styles like this um, two spines that are the one and a half inch but then this when you uh, close it will wrap around the front and magnetically will keep it closed so that it'll open like so. Okay, so that's what we're shooting for. So uh, I'm going to actually go ahead and wrap my chipboard first just because I am trying to think about how I'm going to do this as I go. It'll be good to have the uh, cover done so I can kind of place things down and see how it looks. So what I need to do is attach some of my 12 by 12 paper um, so that it's long enough to uh, put the chipboard on. Uh, because this is ten and a half, uh, we're going to wrap it, but we're not going to have a one inch border. We're going to have a three, four, seven inch border because there's only, um, the paper's only 12 inches. And so uh, 12 divided by, or excuse me, um, the one and a half inch difference, we divide by two and that's how I got the three fourths. So it'll be three fourths on the top that we fold over and three fourths on the bottom. We can still do the one inch on the side. That won't make a difference. So let me go ahead and get some paper ready. I'm going to connect the pieces with score tape. So let me show you the paper. This is artisan cardstock from the store and it's a linen based cardstock. And so it doesn't 
um, split or you know break apart so these are 12 by 12 and what I do is I just place score tape on one end and then place another piece on top and so that I can combine them I'm thinking I'm going to be combining three sheets so let me check I'm going to go ahead and put three pieces together and make sure that that's going to be long enough for the cover all of my chipboard is cut all of them uh, on the back have score tape I've been buying the six by six sheets of score tape from um, Country Craft Creations and boy does it save time and then I just cut it down to the sizes that I need but you do want to put a lot of score tape I believe on the back of your uh, covers just because you want it to as much time and effort as you put into it you want to make sure you have a good stick and that nothing happens to it so I have placed score tape on the back of all of my pieces we're gonna start with our eight and a half by ten and a half inch piece now I did kind of lay this out ahead of time because I do not want uh, my book to bend where the two pieces of paper are connected and so I want to make sure that I have um, laid it out so that either my chipboard is in between that but I don't want it right on the side because if that's the case I'm afraid it won't stay strong and I want to have that covered so I laid this out so that I have a three-fourths inch border on all three sides and when I laid it out it looks like this will be perfect and so it will not have a piece of chipboard um, at the end of the connection we don't want that so I'm just going to go ahead and when I lay out my chipboard and adhere it I am going to use the grid on my board on my working space and I'll try to move it up a little bit this is a long piece of paper I combined three sheets and I'm just going to lay it on the grid now I also have, um, I think they call this a quilting ruler, I don't know, I don't quilt, um, but I'm just, it's a non-stick on the back, and so I'm going to lay that at the bottom of my paper so that I make sure I stay at three-fourths of an inch and keep everything lined up nice and neat. And so I have that as my guide, and then I can tell where I need to place everything. So it looks like... Um, that's right there okay so that's how I'm gonna get started I'm gonna go ahead and take the backing off of all of my um, score tape pieces and if you don't use these larger sheets that takes a while you'll see as I'm over here and I just use my fingernail some people have to use um, a sharp tool uh, to get that off but I'm able to usually get it off just with my fingers I say that usually <laughs> okay so let's get all this off my goal is to learn how to speed up the video so you don't get bored out of your mind watching some of this stuff but I know if you're working along with me then it's okay um, but you might if I learn how to speed it up you'll just pause and then um, go ahead and move forward after you've done the same thing that I've done all right so I'm going to lay this down looking at my markings and that looks about right and you just want to press down real well to make sure it adheres once we're done we'll turn it over on the other side and make sure that we give it a good burnishing too so that we make sure that it's adhered real strongly and real snugly so I'm going to move this down and I'm going to go ahead and move my ruler over and again leaving myself a three-fourths inch border along the bottom I'm now going to take one of the one and a half inch strips and uh, before I do that let me tell you what I do I sometimes forget um, you do want a space in between your covers uh, the pieces of your cover so that uh, when you fold it and close it it does not crack or break so a lot of people use score tape in between their pieces this is one fourth inch score tape and that's what I use and you just want to butt it up as close as you can to that other piece and lay it down straight and oh, I have too much coming off here okay and you just make sure that's down real good so now I'm going to go ahead and put my three-fourths inch piece I lied I said three-fourths that's my border uh, my one and a half inch piece and it will be exactly where it needs to be space wise so that nothing cracks so I just lay this right up against that score tape that I just placed 
So let's go ahead and remove the backing, making sure you don't have any little pieces sticking out. I like to tuck those down. And what I mean by little pieces is sometimes when I put my tape on, there's just a little bit of overhang. So I just fold that over. Okay, and let's go ahead and place the one and a half inch piece right up against that score tape and press down. Again, we'll turn it over when we're done. I'm going to go ahead and move my paper down and the next piece will be another eight and a half by ten and a half inch piece. So let me move this down. Again, I line it up on the grid on my paper just to make sure I'm keeping everything straight. Okay, place my ruler at three-fourths of an inch. Um, I'm going to place the one-fourth inch score tape down as a placeholder. Sure it's down. I have a little bit of a gap here, but I, it'll be fine. Okay, so back to three fourths of an inch, and go ahead and remove the backing from your eight and a half by ten and a half inch sheet of chipboard, and again, I just use my finger, but some people use the, a tool to help lift that protective back because when you put your score tape down make sure you're pressing real good so there's a good stick so I usually go through with uh, something and push down just to make sure it adheres real well so that when you lift the backing off you don't get the tape coming off with it okay and now the big two big sheets which are the easiest totally worth the, the money I think Fabulous. Okay. Make sure all the loose ends are tucked in. And let's make sure I'm going to buff this up right against that score tape. Press down. Let's put another strip of score tape. I'm going to move this down a hair. Okay. And now remove the backing from the one and a half inch piece again one and a half by ten and a half and this is going to work out just great so that I don't have a piece on the edge of my connection of the pieces of cardstock because I laid it out to make sure and on my first videos I never really showed I don't putting the cover together and you know really there's a bunch of tutorials out there where you can look to see how a cover is put together but I think it's kind of nice um, to see the whole thing and not have to jump around to different videos so I started showing this too all right place that down lining it right up bump up against that score tape You know, when I first started doing the score tape, I thought, ooh, that's too much of a space. But really, it's not. <laughs> it actually is just right. All right, so the last piece we need to do is the three and a half inch by ten and a half inch piece. And one more piece of score tape to divide, have that space. Some people use a chipboard or two chipboard with 
um, space between and so they don't use the score tape they just lay down um, chipboard as a guide Started getting off a little bit. Right here I got off, so there's a little bit of a space there that I don't like, but it'll be fine. And last piece, and see my uh, seam is right here, so it's going to be fall just in the exact spot I want it to. Force. Like I said, normally I do a one inch border, but because of the size, you have to do smaller. Now you'll notice we have a lot of uh, leftover on this side, so I'm just going to take my X Acto knife and do a three fourths inch, not this wide, that's too big, but um, I will go ahead and take my X-Acto knife and trim along this so that I have another 3 fourths inch border on this side. I am going to place score tape along the perimeter of my chipboard and along the perimeter of my black card stock um, so that it will stay together nice and neat. So I'm going to go ahead and put the score tape on and I will be back. I went ahead and put the score tape around the perimeter of my chipboard and the perimeter of my black paper. I had a little oops here but we'll ignore that for right now. Um, I am. I did remove the score tape backing in between my uh, pieces of chipboard um, because if I don't do it then I will forget. So I'm going to take my tool now and I'm going to miter the corners. I'm not very, uh, I seem to usually have a problem with mitering corners so I went ahead and invested in this metal uh, guide. And so you just place that here and you're going to cut it a diagonal but for some reason I was struggling with that and so to me it was just easier to go ahead and purchase this tool to get the right amount cut off and so you'll notice there's just a little tiny bit on the corner it's not right up to the chipboard because then you'll have brown chipboard showing when you um, when you fold over the corners so I'm just it just gives you like oh I'd say about an eighth, maybe a hair more um, at the corner and not right up to the chipboard. It does give just the right amount of leftover. And one more. Turn it upside down. There are different ways to miter the corner. I know that if you look at some of Tammy Merrill's videos, she does it differently now. She cuts like a square out of the corner uh, and it d works for her every time so that she doesn't have any of the chipboard showing. So just kind of look at different videos and see what works best for you. All right, so now I'm going to wrap um, my paper around my chipboard and when I do that I want to give the paper I call it a memory and so I want to start folding it and I lift it up and I start bending it so I'm lifting it up and bending it um, where the chipboard is just to kind of get it to bend easier and in the right spot um, you can take your burnishing tool and kind of go around the edge just so that it works, it has a nice clean finish. I'm going to go ahead and do that to the other side. So I just lift it up on it and bend it where the paper meets the chipboard. I call that giving it a memory, the paper. Okay, and then I just use my hand and I go around and kind of push it. Use my burnishing tool. Okay. 
This really is long, so it's, I hope I'm not getting out of the camera too much. All right, and then let's do the two shorter ends too. I know I'm out of camera right now, but it's so long I can't help it. One more side. All right. So now I have it backwards, so let me go ahead. I guess it doesn't matter. I'm just... Okay, so I do my two long sides first. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing of my score tape. And I'm going to do that from the chipboard and from the paper. And I'm going to do the two sides also because there is some overlap. So let me take this backing off. Now, before I start taking, well, I'll go ahead and take off the sides too. Um, actually, I'm just going to do a little bit. Okay. So a trick that many people use, or a lot, a lot of people use, is to take your art glitter glue and just run a fine bead along the base of the chipboard, and that kind of moistens the chipboard. Um, it adheres and has a nice clean uh, finish where the paper bends over. Kind of softens the paper a little bit so you, it moves a little bit better. Just kind of let it sit there for a second. And then when you wrap it, I'm going to start in the middle. I'm going to push it over and then I'm just going to kind of work my way to one side and then the other side, getting it to wrap around nice and neat. So I'm going to start here in the middle. And I'm just using my hands. I do have my burnishing tool. Go to both, kind of going a little bit to each side. Go ahead and really press down and burnish. I'm also going to go along the edge, the outside edge, just to make sure that it's sticking to that glue. Okay. All right, that worked nice and neat. Now I'm going to turn it around into the other long side. And so take off the backing of your score tape on the long side. And I'm going to do a little bit on the side also so it doesn't have any overlap and land on top of it. Okay. So I'm going to lift this up a little bit on this end so it doesn't get in the way. And a little bit here too. Okay, so again, I'm going to put that fine line up against the, against the chipboard. If you don't have it, it's not a problem. It'll still wrap nicely. It's just kind of an extra support, I guess, or just kind of going above and beyond to make sure that everything's nice and crisp and clean and the paper that wraps around is really um, adhered nicely. So just let it sit for kind of a second. Get rid of that piece. And here we go. It starts closer to the middle. Really press down. Start moving out on I'm moving out on both sides because I don't want any gaps. Right, and I'm going to take my burnishing tool and make sure it's down real good. I am going to go along my edges. Okay. 
All right. This is a little time consuming, but it's an important piece of album making. So uh, let's take off this side. Now, when you do the corner or the opposite sides now, you're going to have a little bit of hangover paper here and you want to tuck that in because you don't want it to gap. So this has always been kind of a sore spot for me. Sometimes I do it well and sometimes I don't. You just want to make sure that that little piece gets tucked in. Okay, and let's hope I did that fine. I am going to put that fine line of glue here. Let it sit for a second. Again, make sure that those are in. Because you do want your, nothing as I think, nothing bothers me more is when I can see chipboard through my paper. Oh, that just about puts me over the edge. <laughs> Okay, and let's start lifting it, starting in about the center and bringing it all the way down on each side. Burnish it so it stays nice, and lays down nice and neat. All right, and people, we have one more edge. Okay, go ahead and remove that backing. I'm going to go ahead and try and tuck in those sides. Oh, my finger went right in the... Okay. And a line of glue. Let it sit just for a second. Start lifting it up. I'm rubbing it around the edge where that glue is so it sticks nice and neat to the chipboard. Starting in the center, moving my hand out to make sure it's laying flat with no gaps. And go ahead and burnish it real well. And we have our cover done with the wrapping. So now, because we have this gusset, we can, I just make sure that the paper is adhering to that um, score tape I put in there. And now it's gonna be easier to fold over. Okay. So our book will be over and then up and over like so and I do see the seam right here but that's going to be covered with uh, decorative paper so no worries okay all right so the next step so the next step is going to be to make the hinges now I just want one hinge because I don't want this book to be too bulky and I don't want the pages getting in the way of one another but I do want one hinge so uh, you're going to need two pieces of paper that measure four by ten, and the scoring is at one and a half, two, and two and a half. Okay, so if you want to freeze and write that down, two at four by ten, score at one and a half, two, and two and a half. So let me do that. This is what it's going to look like when we are done. You'll see that there is just one hinge there. So what you do is place your four inch side along the top of your scoreboard. Where's my... And like I said, you're going to score at one and a half, two, and two and a half. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that center uh, score line and I'm going to fold it over and I am going to burnish that okay and then I'm going to take the other two and bend them the opposite direction so now this one goes like so and the other outside score line goes like so okay 
because we want it to be like a mountain. Okay, so if you look, that's what it looks like when you've scored it and burnished it. And I'm going to place a piece of score tape to keep that hinge together. Don't overlap your score lines. This is 3 8 of an inch uh, score tape that I'm using. I'm going to make sure that it's adhered real well. And I'm going to go ahead remove the backing and then stick those together. Okay. And so that is our one hinge. And so that's going to go on our one and a half inch uh, corners here. So you'll have one here on that one and a half inch piece of chipboard. And you're going to place one here on this one and a half inch piece of chipboard. And so you need to put whatever kind of adhesive you like on the back. I'm going to go ahead and do score tape again. And I'm going to center the uh, hinge so that it's in the center of this one and a half inch piece. And I'm going to make sure that I have the same distance at the top as I have at the bottom because this is a half of an inch shorter than the book. And so I need about a one fourth inch um, space at the top and the bottom. Okay. And I'm going to do that to both sides. So put score tape on the back and center them on your one and a half inch piece uh, binding uh, corners. What do you want to call it? Uh, binding, I guess. <laughs> the word's not coming to me. Okay, let me do that and I'll be back. I put score tape on the back of both of my hinges. Um, you also are going to need um, the 1 4 inch score tape along the on both sides of the one hinge that you've made and you want to place it as close to the top as you can. So I'm going to show you how I do it. I just kind of push that hinge down and I place it again as close to the top as possible. And this you put it at the top because you don't want to put your page all the way to the bottom otherwise like when you're attaching the page onto this hinge if you put your uh, paper all the way down the bottom it doesn't lay nice and flat like it should so now i'm going to push it over to the other side and i'm going to place the score tape along the top of that side as close to the top as i can get okay and just make sure it's attached Give it a good push and let's do the other one also. Okay. There's one side. And the other. Okay, and make sure that's on real good. So now it's time to center uh, your hinge on the one and a half inch piece. Again, looking at the top and bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my score tape backing and make sure that if I have any overhang of tape that I push it down around the corner so it doesn't show. This is when that thicker score tape is really nice. The sheets, then you, they also sell at eight and a half by 11. Okay, so just kind of make sure all the tape. Had a little overhang there. Okay, now I'm gonna eyeball it. If you don't feel comfortable eyeballing it, you can put a tick, tick mark in the center. I am just, Gonna look top and bottom. And happy there. Push down real well. And now you have two gussets here on the side that you want to make sure that you're pushing that into so that when we fold over our book. That's going to lay nice and flat. So I'm going to go ahead and get my tool here and just kind of make sure that it's going in. Now I'm using really good paper. I'm using that linen cardstock. 
so I'm I don't worry about it ripping or tearing you have to kind of base it off of the paper you're using okay and I'm starting to lift the cover just to make sure everything's laying down flat as I bring it up It is a little snug, but it will, with time and opening it and closing it, it does loosen up. Okay. And now I'm going to do the other side, making sure that it's adhering to that gusset where I had that uh, score tape separating my two pieces of chipboard. And I'm going to start lifting this to make sure that it's sticking inside okay and you only need to bring it straight up this other piece right here because when you fold your book it's not like you're gonna place this side all the way down to the over here so you don't you can be gentle and not have to go all the way to the other side just kind of bring them both up okay and that looks like it's sticking real well so now it's time to do the other one and you want to make sure that you have the same distance at the top and bottom as you use for that uh, other hinge. So you kind of have to have an eye for detail. And patience. And you also have to be able to say if you if it doesn't line up exactly perfectly or you have a little oops, oh well, nobody's going to notice it but you. And sometimes that's hard for us because we want it to be perfect, but it ain't gonna happen okay so I'm going to eyeball it looking at the one across from it too and go ahead and push down we're gonna go through the same thing making sure that it's in pushed into that gusset So I'm going to start lift bending it here. Bringing that straight up at a 90 degree angle. Don't bring it, try and bring it all the way to the other piece here. Okay, and now we're going to do the same thing. To this one, this side. Bringing this straight up. Okay. And there you go. You can see that I have the two hinges on each side. Okay, and it makes a perfect little box here. Oops, I have the wrong side on the outside. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now it's the fun part, and that is trying to, uh, putting together the pockets and the flips and the folds. And we are going to be putting uh, magnets uh, next to keep this closed because you want to do that before you put your decorative paper on. So I'm going to be using the basic gray magnets that I get from Country Craft Creations. They come like this. And I have tried to cut corners maybe and get them someplace else or um, try a cheaper one. Don't waste your time. These are the best. They really are. So they're very thin and they're very strong. And she has two sizes. So this one comes with 12. And so you're going to need six because I'm doing three magnets. So you'll need one here and then it's partner that goes on the other side. So three sets of two. Okay. And okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is take out a plus and a minus for my magnets and stick them together. There's one set. 
Now I have no idea how I ended up with an extra magnet. How do you just... I must have lost one and not remembered because I'm going to have an extra one. How stupid is that? I wonder what I did. Look, two minus and a plus left. Hmm. Oh, crud. I didn't want those going together. Hold on. See, they're strong. I told you. I thought they were far enough apart. Okay, and then one more set. Now these already have adhesive on the back also, which is very nice. Okay. All right. So we want to close our book. And I have a little piece of paper here that's driving me insane. I got to... Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to space them out equally on the other side of this flap. So I'm going to put one, uh, you know what, first I'm going to put my black paper, um, I need to cover this first before I put my magnets on. This side's already covered, but I do need to put um, paper here. So you have to decide if you want black paper or if you want decorative paper. Um, and let's go ahead and just... I got ahead of myself. Before let's we do the magnets, let's go ahead and place our paper on the inside. And I think I am going to do um, decorative paper rather than black paper. So I'm going to do some measuring. So I know, even though I know this is eight and a half by ten and a half, I still like to measure because when you add the paper, sometimes it adds a little extra, and it, you don't want to cut your paper too small. So I like it to come pretty close to the edge here and I don't want it to go over I'm gonna this well you'll see black I don't want it to go over the um, gusset so I want it to be about I'm gonna make mine anyway eight and a fourth yep eight and a fourth by ten and a fourth so I guess Yep, so I need two pieces of eight and a fourth by ten and a fourth. And then I'm going to do three and a fourth by ten and a fourth. Okay, so let me decide what paper I'm going to use. So I almost screwed up, so I'm glad I caught myself before I did. So I'll put a note at the beginning of the video to make sure you watch this all the way through. Because if you would have put your magnets on after your... You put your decorative paper on that's not good so I decided not to do black paper I decided to do the decorative paper and so because of that I need to place my magnets on here first not second so I placed my uh, paper on the big sections the eight and a fourth by ten and a fourth inch pieces but this I'm going to um, wait and I'm gonna put my magnets on first so glad I caught that so I am just going to take the backing off of my magnet and I'm going to place it probably about an inch down from the edge of there okay, and about an inch and a half I guess from the top and I'm going to push down real good and then I'm going to put the next one on and I'll put that one more in the center and you can have different kinds of closures. Some people like to have um, seam binding on the edges and tie it closed. Some people do belly bands. Some do a hook. Um, I have from the store, I got something that I could have used too. Uh, some people use this as a closure and put one on uh, the little piece and then one on the larger one on the front. It's whatever trips your trigger. And today the magnets tripped my trigger. Okay, so about an inch down towards the center. Push down real good. And my last one. Sometimes it's hard for me to get this backing off. Okay, and I'll put that one about right there. Okay, and I'm pushing down. Now I have the two pieces together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close this and I'm going to take the backing off and see where they stick and then they should be in the right spot. So I'm going to take 
the adhesive off the other piece, the backing. Come on. Okay. And one more. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna bring my book up and over. Actually, I'm gonna stand mine up just to make sure that I get it lined up correctly on the top and the bottom. Okay, so now I'm gonna push down really firmly so that that adhesive catches to the other black, the other cover and that they stick. Okay, so let's see. Ah, and it worked. Woohoo! Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I just take a small, I take the 1 8 inch score tape and I just put a little piece on top just to make sure that my magnet doesn't move. Even though it has that adhesive on the back, I just want to make sure. So I'm just going to place a thin piece uh, across the top. of each one. Okay, and I am gonna go ahead and do that to this one also, just a thin piece. I don't want it to be too thick because I don't want it to take away the magnetism, you know, I don't want it to be, have so much over the magnet that it won't stick, so I don't want it to be too thick. When I use this 1 8 inch, sometimes it's hard for me to find the beginning of the roll. Okay, and one more. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and place my paper on the last section. Now I did take my um, black Distress ink, but, and I went ahead and went around my edges because when you cut the paper, you see that white, and I don't like that. I like it to be nice and neat looking, so Go ahead and around the edges with the color of your choice. And now I'm just going to place this here. And then we're going to start decorating or adding our pages and flips and all that kind of stuff. Okay, moving right along. I went ahead and put my um, paper on the outside of my book. Um, and I just went uh, either, I went about an eighth of an inch smaller than the actual measurement so that you can see a little bit of the black around the outside. So you just kind of go by what you prefer. Some people go a fourth of an inch smaller. Some people go an eighth of an inch smaller. Um, I ended up cutting all of my papers 10 and 3 eighths inches long, um, but I had to kind of go back and remeasure these because once you put the book together, you think, oh, well, this was three and a half inches, so I'll cut my paper at three and three eighths, but you kind of need to remeasure just to make sure um, because it, by the time you put the paper on and you bend the cover and just just measure twice it's always better to do that so what i've decided to do um, is to put two little booklets on the front because this is a masculine paper i don't i can't go all frilly and fl floral so i'm going to put these little um, booklets on the front and i'll still put something right here also i just don't know what quite yet um, but what these booklets do is you just they're going to be attached i don't have them attached yet but um, you're going to attach them to the front cover, and when you undo the seam binding, it's a trifold. Um, I just put a little cut apart here, um, stuck a little card in there, and um, then it opens three ways. And these are all flaps, and then there's pockets underneath. And you might have seen it before where people don't make them pockets, and they just um, leave the paper down. But I thought it would be a little bit cuter for what I'm looking for to make it a pocket. So I ended up gluing the sides down and just putting a cut apart inside. And the same thing with the two sides here. And how I keep them closed is I just took um, part of the paper collection and mounted it on black and just glued at the bottom so that I could tuck this um, down into it to keep it closed. So let me show you how I made that. Okay. You are going to need two pieces of paper that measure 11 by 12, and we're going to do two sets of scoring. We're going to do two and three eighths. Nope, that's, is that right? Yes. 
uh, sorry, two and three eighths and seven and a fourth. And then we're going to turn our paper and make four more score lines at three and seven eighths, four and one eighth, eight and eight and a fourth. So we're going to start with our 11 inch side going across the top. And that's where you do the first two score lines. So I'm going to go ahead and do two and three eighths. That doesn't look, yeah, that's right. Uh, two and three eighths. And then the second score line was at seven and a fourth. Okay. Now you're going to turn your paper so that you now have the 12 inch uh, side going across the top and go to three and seven eighths, four and one eighth, go uh, to eight and eight and one fourth. Okay. Looks like so. Now what you're going to do is you're going to cut out these little rectangular 1 4th inch pieces down at the bottom and at the top. Okay, and that's going to help our uh, booklet fold a little bit nicer. So you can use scissors if you want to put it in your cutter, you can. Um, I found that it was just easier for me to use my scissors this time. And when I did this, you want to make sure that you cut so that you don't see any of the score. Um, so I cut just on the side of that score mark, and then you go up to the first score. What is going on? And stop. And then on the other score line, just go right to the side of it so that you don't see that um, dent or, in, you know, de depression into the paper. And I'm going to go ahead and get my exacto um, knife to go across the side just because I don't want to rip my paper. So I'll do that in a second. And I'm just going to do all my cutting on the side here. And then I'll go back and clip out that little rectangle. Okay, I'm going to turn my paper the other direction and just do these uh, that take out the 1 4 inch triangle on the short side also. Okay. And I said for some reason I had better luck with my exacto knife taking those pieces out so I just go right there on the score line and take that out My eyes are so bad that on this black cardstock, it's hard for me to see. Okay, turn it and do the other two. Okay. What you want to do next then is just burnish your score lines. of them and there is a fourth of an inch gusset then for in between each of the pockets the shorter side is at the top for when we put it together make sure everything's lined up in case you have to do any additional trimming that might happen. And the other side. Now you can add any kind of decorative edge that you want on these, on the flaps, but because mine is, I'm using masculine paper, I didn't want to get too crazy. Um, so what I did is I just took my circle punch and on the longer edge down here, 
try and flatten that now. The part that has the longer pieces at the bottom, I just eyeballed it to find the center and I took my one and three eighths inch circle punch and I just cut that out and I did it to all three. Like I said, like I, said I just eyeball it. And the third one. Okay. Now you are going to place uh, glue on the very outside edge of your paper to make the pocket. Um, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do some different. Um, I have a stub punch, so on the first one, I'll go ahead and do the stub corner. And in the middle one, I will do. No, the other end, I'll do the angle. And in the middle one, I will do the corner rounder. So that they're all a little bit different. Okay. All right, so each one's a little bit different. So like I said, we're just going to take some glue and put a very fine line on each end to fold up the pocket, the one that has the half circle. Oh, my glue's stuck. I need to put my pin back in. I need to clean the tip. I've used this for a long time without putting cleaning it out. Oh my gosh, my eyes, I'm telling you, I cannot, oh jeepers, just when I think I've got it in there, it's a really small, I need to get my eyes checked. I think my, oh for crying out loud, the, my vision for up close seems blurry. Ah, uh, I think that's age. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's hope that works. There we go. When I say a thin line, I'm talking a thin line and as close to the edge as you can get it. Okay. Just on the left and the right hand side, then just fold that up and press down. And if you have any seepage, just rub that off with a dry baby wipe or whatever it is that you use. Because this is only going to hold a um, three by four cut apart, you don't need it to be super super glued down. I mean just a very thin line. So I just did the middle one, bring that up, push it down. And the last one and bring it up, push it down. Okay. And you'll put your flaps down. Um, I left this black in mine, but I did use the decorative paper on the front. If you want to have decorative paper in the back on this back part, I would cover it before I folded it and glued it down because each one has got glue probably in a little bit different spot and so you want all your paper to be consistently sized. So like I said, if you want this black back piece covered with decorative paper, cover it before you bring your flap up. Okay. Okay. So then you would just cover your paper, decide if what kind of closure you want. Maybe you want magnets. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use the strategy, the technique that I used before by putting a piece of paper and gluing it just on the bottom. But all you have to do then is put your decorative paper on and I glued a piece of seam binding on the back and that is how I attached. I just put seam binding on the back and glued it down and then I'll put it on my book. Okay, so that is the little booklets that are on the front cover and I have two of those. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the inside. Okay, for this album we have two different pages we have to make because there's just one hinge. And so to do that, um, this is an example of what the right hand, or excuse me, the left hand side looks like. 
we're going to have to do everything the opposite on the for the right hand side page because they're mirror images and so we're going to do opposite so let me show you what this looks like before it is decorated uh, this first flap has a pocket right here and then um, it also has a large pocket right here when you open it i left this plane uh, for larger pictures or you could put two smaller pictures um, these go up and then this one goes down and then this is a double pocket right here okay and then on this side you have the l pocket with a pocket inside so we're going to do the same exact thing um, for the right hand page so when i give you the measurements and i show you how to do this you're going to do one for the left and one for the right okay so this was my uh, left hand page now it's time for the right hand page so the base page you're going to need two pieces of cardstock you need um, now this says two because you're going to have one for the left and one for right so two at eight by eleven and one eighth and two at eight by ten and an eighth okay so once you have those cut you're going to take the eight by eleven and one eighth score at one half inch on the eleven inch side eleven and eighth inch side and then also a half inch on the other side. You're going to burnish those score marks. Like so. And then you're going to place the 8 by 10 and an eighth on top like this. Okay. So I'm just going to use, I used to use score tape, but for, um, I think it's a lot cheaper to use the art glitter glue and I think it has just as firm of hold so you use whatever adhesive works for you. It does get a little messy I think using the glue just because I don't control the right amount. Sometimes I get too much but I'd rather have too much than not enough. So I do one at a time. So I have my glue on the half inch and I'm going to place the other piece right on top of there and line it up as closely as possible and once I press down I then open it and go ahead and burnish it on the inside now you, I do get some glue that comes out but this glue does dry clear and even if it doesn't this is the inside but even if it doesn't clear uh, dry clear um, I'm gonna cover it with paper anyway so it doesn't really matter okay so then the next one, we're just going to go ahead and if you did it correctly, you should be able to lay it down flat and have it line up. So glue on the one half inch fold. And just like so. Bend that down, place this on top. And go ahead and burnish. Okay, I like to look at the sides here to make sure there's nothing hanging over because if so I'm going to cut it off, but this looks pretty good. Take my dry baby wipe. I just started doing that. I um, have seen people do it and I was like, oh yeah, I, I always forgot to set up my baby wipes, but now, now that I've done it, it does work really nice. Okay, so um, the first flap we're going to do then, um, that's my waterfall, let's see over here. Okay, so you're going to need to cut two pieces, actually you're going to cut four because two for, um, one for the left, one for the right. So a nine by seven and a 10 by five and a half. Now on the nine by seven, you are going to put the seven inches across the top and score at one inch. So if you want to freeze your video right now and copy that down. Um, and the reason for that is because we're going to attach it a little bit differently. And so I wanted a wider uh, connection so it's just stronger and more firm. So go ahead and burnish that. Okay, 
So this is going to be placed right here on my edge on the right hand side. You're going to do one on the right hand side and on your other piece you're going to go ahead and do that on the left hand side. Okay, but I'm working on my right. Okay, so then on top of this we're going to have a, um, a pocket so that you can put things in. So that uh, pocket was the one that was 10 by 5 and a half and you do need to score on three sides. So you place the 10 inch side on and do a half, rotate it, do a half inch score, rotate it, do a half inch score. To get rid of bulk, I cut out my corners at an angle. And I am going to miter the top corners also. So I just cut at an angle up to that score, cut at an angle up to the score. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and burnish all of my score marks. The flatter we can get it, the better. It just lays nicer in your album. So I am going to go ahead and connect this to the 9x7 page we had. So I'm going to turn it sideways and I'm going to put some glue on my half inch side. It's a half inch fold, whatever. Okay. And it's this one too. Can't see it. Okay, I uh, put my two sides in and then I bring up the bottom. Okay, and then I'm going to place it on the edge where I folded that one inch strip back. That's the side I'm attaching it to. And go ahead and burnish that on so it sticks real well. You know with wet glue it does take just a second to dry. And this art glitter glue does dry quickly but you still have to give it a minute or so. I always get glue on my fingers and then I get it on the paper, but it'll be covered. Okay, so then there is also a pocket down here on this part. And so for that pocket, you need to cut a piece that's four by six. So you'll cut two of those while you're at it. So you can do the other side at the same time. And we're going to score at one half inch on three sides. So I place it on my scoreboard with the six inches across the top. Go one half, turn it one turn, do a half turn it one more time, do a half. And again with the pockets, I cut out that corner at an angle. And I'm going to miter the top at an angle. Cut the square out at an angle. And miter the top. I turn it upside down when I do that side. Okay. And just like before then, we're going to go ahead and give the score marks a good burnish and we'll attach it. And go ahead and add glue. On both sides and the bottom. And 
let's attach it to the bottom of that front piece. So tuck in your two sides, line it up. So with a male style folio, um, I'm doing less decorating and leaving larger spaces for pictures just because I think that that is appropriate for this type of album. Um, it is kind of hard for me not to want to go and add a bunch of decorations, but I think that really the paper will speak for itself on this one. So, okay. So, um... Let's see, yep. Um, we are going to attach this. I'm going to attach it to my right hand side so that it opens up like so. And I am just going to eyeball it. I'm going to turn this sideways. I'm just going to eyeball the center so that I can get it as close to the center as possible. And I'm going to put glue on that one inch strip. I don't think I'd burnish this enough, just a second. Alrighty, oh, I still see a little bit of a space. Okay. And all the way around in the center. Like I said, I usually use too much glow. Okay. And let's center this. If you don't like to eyeball, you can go ahead and measure all the way to the edge. And I'm going to go ahead and open that and give it a good burnish. Alrighty, so there's that, and now we're going to do two flaps, one that goes up and one that goes down. So you're going to need two pieces of paper for this one and two pieces for the other one. So you'll have a total of four, and you're going to cut those at eight by five and three fourths, and you're going to score uh, at one half inch on one side, and I'll show you that. So place your paper so that the five and three-fourths inches is across the top. Score it a half. Do the same thing for the other one. Five and three-fourths at the top. Score it a half. Some people like to round their corners on these doors or, you know, on the flaps. Because it's for a man, I decided to leave them sharp edges. I hope that's not sexist. <laughs> Who knows, nowadays everything you say is misconstrued sometimes. Okay, um, we're going to place one at the bottom. Now we want to make sure that when we place this, that this still closes nice and, and flat. If you put it over the score line, you're going to have a hard time getting this to fold down. So I'm going to line it up with the very far left hand side and I still should have it fold nice and neat on top. Okay, just be careful try it before you press it all the way down and then you can always burnish it again if it's giving you a little bit of a there's a bump or you know it's kind of raised you can burnish it and see if you can get it to flatten out so I'm going as far to the left as I can lining it up at the bottom I did not go over that score line Go ahead and open it and make sure it's down real good. I see a little bit of escaped glue. Okay, I 
am going to turn this upside down for the next one and do the same thing. You're going to want to be conscientious of the side that folds over so that it will fold nice and neat without any gapping or bubbling. And if it does, um, if you feel like you need to trim it a hair before you lay it down, that'll work too. Okay. And lining it up at the bottom and the far left. Go ahead and open it. Okay. Now when I did mine, I uh, planned on the top flap going over the bottom flap. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a good burnish at this point just to make sure that everything is laying as flat as possible. Alright, so when we open the top and the bottom flap, there is then a double pocket on the inside. So here's how I do the double pocket. So you're going to need a total of two that measure four by eight and seven eighths, and two that measure three by eight and seven eighths. Okay, and I'm going to show you how I do the, um, the double pocket so that it doesn't get so bulky. So I'm going to start with my four and eight and seven eighths piece. And I did score one half inch on each side. So the eight and seven eighths inch side goes at the top half. I turn it and do half. Now the reason why I didn't do half on the bottom is because I didn't want it to get too thick. And because this flap is down here, the stuff that you put in the pocket isn't going to go anywhere. But I did, I am going to put a line of glue across the bottom. Okay, so let's go ahead and mite, uh, not miter, um, burnish. Okay, so I'm going to place this right down here and I line it up as far to the side as I can on the left, my left hand side so that when I close this, nothing gets in the way. Okay, so I'm going to put glue on the half inch and a bead of glue across the bottom. And that again is just to make sure that I don't have too much thickness in my book. And because I have a flap at the bottom, it will kind of act as a stopper anyway. Just like so. Pinch your sides in, line it up, don't go over any score lines. The flaps are, you want to avoid those score lines on flaps. Let's make sure, yep. I get so much glue on my fingers, it just goes all over the paper. Go ahead and give it a good burnish. Okay. I'm going to close that flap and burnish that again. Okay, so the how I do my double pocket then to avoid uh, bulk is now go ahead and take your other piece that was three by eight and seven eighths. And here's what I need for you to do. You're going to go ahead and uh, score it one half inch on each side of the long side. So then I flipped it and I scored it a half on each end. So now what I want you to do is to go ahead and put the three inch side at the top of your scoreboard and put a tick mark at the one inch mark. Okay. And then I turn it and I come over here to this side and I put a tick at the 11 inch mark. 
So that tells me where I need to cut a line to my score and then at an angle. Okay, so it'll look like that. Cut at that tick mark. So you're cutting an inch off of the half inch flap and then you're angling it. So it looks like so. Now let's go ahead and burnish the two sides. Okay, let's bring our booklet page over. So then what happens is this is going to slide into this pocket and where it'll stop where the two, where it meets here at the, where I cut, it just lines up nice and neat with the pocket below it, okay? And this goes down inside and so you can, the pocket goes all the way through. So I'm just gonna put glue on those two little flaps My heater just kicked on. It is April, April, and the heat is kicking on. Okay, slide that down. Make sure it's lined up and that it stops. And it's lined up good on both the left and the right side. Okay, and give it a good burnish. Alrighty, so that is the page that now we'll turn it over and we're going to do an L pocket that has a pocket. So for this, you're gonna need two pieces of paper for each um, side. So you'll um, need one for each, but I have two on my paper here. Does that make sense? I wrote down two so you know to do it twice. Um, you'll need an eight and a half by eight piece and you'll need two at three and a half by eight and three eighths. And let's start with the L pocket. So that's your larger piece. Now this is the one you have to be careful on because you're gonna score it differently depending on whether you're doing the right side or the left side of your um, book. So I've already done my left side. So for the right side, I'm going to place the eight inch side across the top, score it a half, uh, excuse me, uh, I scored this one at seven and a half, and then go ahead and turn it once and do one inch. So it looks like an L the way you scored it. But this is, the, this is my right hand side to put on my page. So I am going to just go ahead while I'm thinking of it, clip that corner out where the two lines intersect and I cut them at an angle, okay? So now I want to cut I want to have a two and a half inch top and I want to go up three inches and then cut at a diagonal so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fold on my score lines. And you don't have to do it with these measurements. Um, if you like a thinner pocket or more of an angled pocket, you can decide how you want to angle it. So what I do now that they're folded, I looked at it and I thought, hmm, I think I want this to be about two and a half inches across the top. Let's see if that's what I did for the other one. I'm pretty sure it is ruler yep I did two and a half and then I did three yep so if you're gonna uh, do it the same way I did it in the same pocket measurement you're gonna want to come over and you want to place a tick mark so this is now seven and a half with the flat folded under so I want to go to the five inch and put a tick mark with my pencil okay and over here, I want to go up to the five inch and put a tick mark so that this is three inches long or tall. So I'm gonna end up taking my cutter and cutting so that this triangular piece will come off. 
so let me I have a let me get another cutter. I'll use this one just so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm gonna place my paper in my cutter so that each tick mark is in the cutting tray. So here was a tick mark and here is my tick mark. And so I just wipe down and here's my triangle, here's my pocket. Throw that away. So now the pocket we're gonna place on top again was three by eight and seven eighths. Uh, nope, that's a lie. Where did I put my, don't, uh, it was three and a half by eight and three eighths, sorry. I was looking at the wrong sticky note. Um, so let's score it one half inch on three sides. Half inch, turn it half inch, back to the long side, half inch. Cut out your corners at an angle. Miter the top, cut out the square in the corner at angles, miter the top. Get all these little pieces of paper off here. And always burnish. You want flat paper, less bulk. Now what I do just to make sure my measurements are correct, so I have my uh, L pocket and my tabs are folded back. I'm gonna fold this up so that my tabs are in and I'm just gonna line it up and make sure that I have it the right length. Okay. Like so. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue that down. Now I did make it a hair shorter just so that it doesn't uh, get in the way of the hinge and that it'll open and close real nice. So mine's just like of an eighth of an inch shorter and I'll make that short end be, I'll line it up on the left hand side here when I do this page. And there you go. I am going to go back and erase those little tick marks if you can see them. So this side will turn actually this way. Let me get my book. I don't want to tell you wrong. So we have it this way. So actually, we're gonna place, I wanted the pocket, the L pocket on this side. But the way I cut it, it's gonna be right here. It doesn't matter, but I don't like it that way. So I will put a note to watch this through first. I would have preferred my pocket be like this. But I'm gonna put it like this because I'm not gonna waste the paper. And it's still totally fine. It won't make a difference. It was just, it's just a personal preference. That's why I'm justifying it anyway. <laughs> uh, I thought I had that all worked out in my head just right. Oh well. It is doable. All right. Got my glue on. Line 
end up at the bottom. Make sure it lines up on the side. There we go. And we're going to do some burnishing to make sure it stays down nice and flat. So let me see the other page. Okay, so it'll be like this. All right, so now the only thing left for our book is the waterfall for the inside. Um, I'm still going to um, put something on this cover. The waterfall will go here. I'm trying to decide what I want here. Um, for the waterfall, I always use a base to keep my uh, papers lined up nice and neat and I always do my waterfall on my scoreboard to keep everything lined up so it doesn't get off a little bit. Um, you're going to need, the base is 9 by 6 and you're going to need 10 pieces of paper that measure 5 by 6 and we're going to score those. But what I do is I take this base that was 9 by 6 and I go ahead and put score tape on the back. And then I take my 10 pieces, I place the 5 inches across the top, and I score it one half inch on all of them. So let's go ahead and burnish all of these. Let me pause this so you don't have to watch me burnish. Alright, so to make your waterfall, if you have a scoreboard, it's best to do it on there to keep things lined up. I had my 9 by 7, is that what I said it was? 9 by 6 piece of paper. Now, the very first one, I went ahead and uh, put glue on the half inch and placed it in, uh, at the top so that it lines up nice and neat with that end, edge of the uh, paper. Okay, So this flips up and you'll see the one half inch piece that I just glued down. So now that's going to be my guide for my next piece. So I'm going to lift, keep that up, push your paper so it's on the side of your scoreboard. And now when you do the next piece, you're going to butt it up right up against that half inch piece that's already laid down. Okay, and you're going to keep doing that until you have all the pieces down. So let me do a couple here. Okay, so I have my glue on there. And let's lay that right up against that one half inch piece and lift up and make sure it's burnished real well. And then I close it and I'm going to burnish it. We want this to be flat because when we add our decorative paper it does get kind of bulky. Okay, so you can see it's lined up real well when you use your scoreboard. So I'm going to lift those two pages now and do the next one. Okay. And that goes right up against this half inch. Okay, so now we have three pages and you just keep going on down. And I continue to burnish. But when you use that, look, everything's lined up nice and neat. There's nothing, no uh, overhang. I went ahead and put the decorative paper on my um, waterfall. And I'm going to, I also put a strip in between each of those so that there was not that black paper showing. So I am ready to attach it to my book and so to do that um, we already put our tape on the back but I am going to use a seam binding closure rather than a magnet flap. So I need to attach 
my seam binding and I think I'll do that with glue. So I'm just going to put, I'm going to eyeball the center and it's, let's see. So that's about the center. So I'm going to put glue just on the side of this piece of score tape right here. Okay. And I'll find the center of my seam binding. And I'll just press down. Okay, and while that's drying, I'll go ahead and take off the rest of the back. My hands are, look at from that black paper. Uh, I'll just take off the rest of the, maybe. All right, my hands, usually I use my fingers, but it wasn't working. I feel like I've been matting this paper forever. Went a little bit slower for some reason. All right. Sorry, it's taking me a while here. Almost done. Okay. So I'm going to eyeball where I want this in the center. Looking at the top, the bottom, and the sides, it looks like about right there. And you need to press down really well for this to stick. Really well. And I think I'll lift some pages up here and just push down on uh, burnish it okay okay so now I'm going to go ahead and tie this doesn't have to be tied too tight. Just enough to keep it down flatter. Okay, so there's that. Now on the front cover, on the front inside cover, I decided to put a pocket where I can put um, a tag behind there and I'll do that in a minute. What I did was, just like we did the front and we, how we had this, I just cut off one third of it and then rather than glue this shut as a pocket, I left it open. So do the same thing for this that you did for this, just cut off a third. So these actually, I have a magnet closure and they open, okay? Um, I did use score tape on this. Uh, instead of the wet glue. Why? I don't know. I just chose that. I'm, usually I've been using the wet glue, but and usually you should use wet glue instead of this when you're putting tags in because sometimes it'll stick. But I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. And again, I'm going to eyeball this. I think I want it up so you can see that man card. All right. And press down real well so you can tuck something in here and these open okay now I will tell you I have two different magnets on here this is the one the basic gray from country craft creations and that stays down fine this was one of those cheap ones that I got and it's flapping open a lot so I do notice a difference all right so now we just need to put our uh, two pages in on the uh, hinge and I'll show you what mine look like so this is 
um, one style or one page that with the different papers on it and I will go and add some decoration I just don't know what yet I'm gonna think about it before I get to it and then here's the other side and then okay and then the back have this L pocket and on the back is this one so to attach these and I'm just gonna I'm not gonna actually do it because I still want to add some uh, decoration um, you are going to you have to make sure that it fits so go ahead and place it on the hinge and make sure that it slides down on it okay you do not want to go all the way down to the bottom so you want to lift it up a little bit and then you're going to take um, I take the uh, poker tool that sharp needle thing and I get you can get the backing off or get it started and then just pull it down and then press real well turn it over use the tool to take off uh, the other side of the score tape or you can do this take a little bit off from each side and just have the tabs off to the side put your page on and then it's easier to pull those tabs down so well that's the main part of it um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my decorating and I'll then I'll add mine to the hinges and then I will do a walkthrough but probably put it at the front of the video instead of the end so uh, that'll be that for a while let me know if you have any questions and I will finish up the book